I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the February 3rd, 2020 Selectman's Meeting. First, we will have public comment. Yep, please join us. She worked hard on Saturday. Yeah, and you did a very good job. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, good evening. And a little bit. Yeah. Uh, for the record, I'm State Representative Pat Bushway. Um, and I just wanted to take a few minutes tonight to talk um, in a little bit more detail about um, Senate Bill 629 that I think, um, you know, we had mentioned a little bit. Um, and I, I think I just wanted to add a little bit of clarification. I don't have a lot more information on it, but I just wanted to uh, share with you what I have found about it. Um, so the, the purpose of the bill is to establish the Solid Waste Reduction Management Fund. And uh, this, this fund, this bill, came out of a committee that was established last year and met th through the year to look at um, what we can do statewide to address this problem of, of solid waste management, solid waste reduction, ideally. Um, and so what the fund will do, the purpose of the fund uh, is to provide assistance to municipalities and also to have the capability to provide matching grants um, for projects like, like for example, perhaps a, a regional recycling facility. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, that's the intent uh, of the fund. Now the money for the fund um, will come from a $1.50 per ton surcharge uh, for uh, all the solid waste that goes into uh, a landfill, a New Hampshire landfill, to an incinerator or to a, um, a waste to energy facility. Um, and so, so that, that will be paid by the municipalities. Um, in return, though, the, the plan is it will be paid in and then it will be returned. Whatever gets paid in by the municipalities will get returned. And so, you know, my question, I went back to the, to the drafters of the bill and said, so where does the money come then for the projects? Yeah. Well, it, it, the, the surcharge is applied to everybody. And there is a significant amount of uh, waste that comes from out-of-state entities, um, perhaps as much as 50% of what goes into our facilities comes from out-of-state. So those entities will also pay that surcharge. So that's where the revenue is generated, because obviously that's not being returned to them. It's just the New Hampshire municipalities that are having the funding return. And the reason they had to do it that way is because, uh, because of the Interstate Commerce Clause in the Constitution um, to put a surcharge just on out-of-state entities uh, would interfere with interstate commerce, and that's, it violates the Interstate Commerce Clause. So that's why it's set up the way it is with it. You know, the money comes in, the money goes out. Um, so. And, and I understand that, you know, that's, that's the intent and, and, you know, I know that there are going to be concerns about, you know, how it will actually play out, um, but, but that is, and, uh, you know, I talked with Mr. Welch and I talked about it today, um, and, and this is the bill as, as submitted, now it may yet be amended. Uh, one of the issues that we had talked about today, the surcharge will be paid on a quarterly basis um, but the return to the municipalities comes back on an annual basis. So, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a cash flow issue there associated with that. Um, so, so again, I don't know, um, you know, it's, it's, this is, it's, it's, in fact, I think it's being heard for the first time tomorrow uh, in the Senate, if anybody's interested in that hearing, I think is at 945 tomorrow in State House 103. 
Um, so that's that's essentially um, what what the bill is intended to do and how it's intended how the plan is to to meet those intentions thank um, you so and if, if there are additional questions um, uh, I, ordinarily we don't um, have a back and forth here okay uh, does anyone want to wave yeah, that I think, to ask I think any it's questions? Prudent while she's here. Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah, so because we'll, the bill is yeah. tomorrow that if anybody has any questions they'd like to bring yeah. up. So. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I have a couple of quick questions. Um, waste to energy. Now, we don't, we drop our waste at turnkey, so that's not a waste to energy situation. So, <coughs> right. Uh, and what about recycling? Because there's a lot of recycling material intermingled with waste still. And again, that's you know one of the things. Overall, the plan here is the the, the purpose is uh, solid waste reduction, and so uh, you know diversion recycling. It, that that's I think part of the intent of the bill is to to help uh, with things like recycling. The solid waste reduction, a, a great deal of the solid waste is contaminated. The recycling. Hmm. But it's, it's certainly interesting. I'm glad you're working on it, but waste is going to be dogging us for the next yeah. century. It, it's, it's a huge problem, and I think that's, you know, that's why yeah. they're at least trying to do something. Okay. Definitely. And I got to tell you, I just received the legislative yeah. bulletin from NHMA, and you pretty much mirrored exactly what they said about the bill. Yeah. So for Hampton, because we have a landfill, we would have to pay a dollar fifty per ton of solid waste on a quarterly basis. But then you're saying everything we paid in it's supposed to come back on an annual basis. On an annual basis. Hmm. Yeah. Um, do you know how many about how many tons do we do a year? Do you guys know offhand? Of waste, waste, waste. solid waste. waste. We're probably we're in the sixty nine hundred tons per year. Okay, so sixty nine hundred so times one fifty, right? Is that all yeah. I have to do? <laughs> yeah, it's about ten and a half. So yeah. Yeah, so ten thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. And then this will come back to us because we're a state landfill. And right. then it's anything else that the state makes from out of state. Everything that, that gets assessed from an out of state disposer uh, goes into the fund then to assist municipalities and to provide these matching grants. Hmm. Okay. And, 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 uh, and I, in fact, I may have read it there, or somebody may have told me. Um, Part of the problem is, or in our case, you know, why we, we need to do this now is we're getting so much out of state because I, I think the surrounding states do have a surcharge. Um, and so it only makes sense that we would. Um, so, Jim, 100% comes back. I'm or sorry. 100% of what we pay in comes back, or it comes back in grants and assistance. I'll ask that question. Yeah, because that's, that's another case that's a, of, of yeah, you know, no question. home rule in New Hampshire, <laughs> right. you know, and money just coming out of the town going to the state and then the state deciding what's going to happen with the money, which, yeah. which, so is, your question is, which is a real negative. Right. So your question is, if it came back in a grant, would that then be deducted from that amount that you would Or would it just come back 100% to help the town with, with their waste disposal? I, I'll ask if the, yeah, the grant is going to come back. What's I mean, it is supposed to come back, mm -hmm. um, and I realize there's, you know, there's concerns. Rusty, but well, absolutely, there are concerns yeah. as they do with the school tax. You know, and the, we give out a lot more than we ever get back, and I, I just think that that's going to be the big concern. If it if it goes out, and <laughs> we're going to get it back, are we going to get it back? And I think that's important. So. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's possible that some improvements are made somewhere along the way. It's a small amount of money. Um, if it helped educate the public in any way or anything like that, so I'm not sure if that's the type of direction those grants would go to. 
but it, it, it is because I mean, it, I my understanding the grants would uh, provide their matching funds for a project, but they're also to provide municipalities with assistance, um, you know, for you know education. And yeah, for, well, that's something you know, that I think that sport is uh, wanting to look further into is more about the education mm -hmm. or continuing the education. It's been difficult in the past. Rick, a, a, a public works. Deputy Director, I think, has a question. Yeah, I just want to ask a question because yeah. it goes right to what Jim was uh, just saying. That, you know, we pay $1.50. It's going to go on top of whatever our tipping fees are to get rid of the trash. <coughs> and I'm hearing it correctly. We're going to get $1.50 back a ton in some form, which was Jim's uh -huh. question. <laughs> There's two different things going on. If that one fifty is straight for straight and it comes back in and it's a source that goes to, let's say, the town's general budget, not the DPW operating budget. That's just one thing. Mm -hmm. But then those extra funds that are collected from the out-of-state um, fees, those could be uh, used to help us obtain grants to promote X, Y, Z. That being Education. the added benefit of this thing. But making sure that we get that 150 back dollar for dollar is to me the essential part because otherwise mm -hmm. it just cost us more yeah. so subject to appropriation right. right well we'll be looking forward to more information yeah and i will see if i can get yeah. clarification to make sure that the that the grants don't have an impact <coughs> on getting back what you paid in because that's my my read of the bill is that's the intent but that's yeah. that's one my tent. interpretation one more quick question uh what's the state going to do about the waste as a result of the Hampton Beach State Park, the waste that is okay, stuck that has in this nothing town. to do with this. Oh, well, it, no, it's no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. We're, we're, okay, this is public comment. And, and we are handling Thank you very much waste. for coming in tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Um, further public comment. <laughs> Chuck Rage, 121 Ocean Boulevard. Um, I did come to talk trash, but I also uh, noticed that uh, Selectman Griffin decided not to run, and I want to thank him for the 15 plus years of service as a, on the select board. Thank you. Thank you. Very much appreciated. I, I, I applaud Jen and Chris coming up with some solutions and coming up with ideas with the board. Uh, I think we're in the right direction. I do think that there is some more that we can do. There's more that we have to work together on. I would like to get a list together of the certain amount of uh, businesses that are going over that number, and maybe we can work some way for a solution, whether it's a monetary solution or something. But we need to make sure trash is taken off the beach. So I really uh, applaud what you're doing, but I want you all to work hard and uh, get some more solutions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Further comment? <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. Um, Brian Provencial. Um, I applaud what the board's been doing with the trash. I think we're getting a little hung up on the bins. I think that I'm well in favor of Article 34. I think that that's going to help a lot. I think, I don't think, I know. Trash reform has to happen. It has to happen in the town. We have to go to composting. The recycling, it, it, it was just a farce. I mean, a lot of people out there don't realize that about 9% of your recycled trash was ever being recycled when it went to China. 12% uh, of it was being burned. The rest was being put into the landfill. 4% um, of our trash is only recycled here in America. Um, China won't even take 5%. If it's 5% contaminated, they won't even take it anymore. Um, I think that recycling needs to be cleaned up. I think there is a way to do it. I think that um, I don't think we should be looking at like what Rochester, or Exeter, or any other towns doing. I think we should be looking outside the box and be a model for everybody else. There's a town out in Washington that their trash budget was three million dollars, and by going to composting and other means like that, their budget is two hundred thousand dollars now. And that's that's where we need to get to. That's, that's all. Thank you for coming in this Thanks. evening. Any other comments? Seeing none, we'll move on to our important uh, first only people tonight. <laughs> all right. Um, 
just some background information. So a couple of Mondays ago when the board uh, made the decision to go to uh, a maximum of 10 cards, it, it did start a number of things within the department. The first one was to, uh, we had, I tasked Mr. Hafey with coming up with a list of, um, we already had a list of those with more than 10 carts, but the question initially asked uh, or charged him with is, well, how many of them are s still actually putting out 10 carts? Um, because it's the off season and not everybody may be putting out 10 carts. Right. In other words, how big was the issue before I decided to send the troops out to uh, attack the, the problem? Um, came back that, you know, so only a few people had out more than 10 carts, but still we, we stuck with the board's um, decision, and that was we picked up just those 10 carts. Mm -hmm. uh, we got about four or five calls. Hey, I had out 15 carts. What about the other five? Yeah. There's tomorrow or there's Wednesday because some of these, especially down at the beach area, we still are down there several days a week. There again, those businesses that produce um, what we call putrescible waste, food waste, something that would stink or rot. Yeah. We're, we're down there more often picking up those containers try, in an effort to keep the beach clean uh, and not smelly and things of that nature. After the board's meeting last Monday, uh, when I got there Tuesday morning, um, it was imperative apparent to me that after reading and listening to the, some of the board's comments and the comments that we had been receiving, that it was becoming on us as a department to say, okay, how are we going to deal with this? Um, many, many times, um, every time we ha I have an, is an initiative, uh, I'm always reminded that Mr. Sullivan always wants me to drop a standard operating procedure. And essentially that's what my staff and you were asking me for, is how are you going to do this? So. Um, spent all of a day and a half. Um, it uh, Something like that had been started and stopped over the last five years, probably just that many times, five mm -hmm. times. Um, so we do now have a standard operating procedure, and it's for one, for determining out who and who gets carts, how many they get, um, what is the process. Um, I didn't release this to you tonight. Because to be honest with you, um, from the team approach, I need to have Jennifer and the rest of the Solway staff vet this document because sometimes my fingers and my thoughts aren't exactly the same. And they always catch me on these things. <laughs> That's why we have a team. Secondly, I actually came up with a checklist. So I watered this document down to something only about two pages that you just have to literally ask questions is the physical address on a named street or way? Um, is there sufficient area to store 10 carts? It takes about 30 feet mm -hmm. of, of curb line to st So those, those questions are also being vetted by, by the, the rest of the staff. Um, from that resulted in, I knew if I gave out that information, it would generate more questions than than, than answers. So then I surmised it down to the memo that you, you have received uh, as staff, as uh, the board. Um, in hindsight, I realized that this should have been done two directors ago. Yeah. Probably between the March 11 town meeting and the July 1 issuance of carts. Mm -hmm. And that's why it wasn't that daunting of a task to put something like this together because it literally had been started and stopped a number of times. Yeah. Uh, it, this, the SOP and, and the process of doing it is influenced by four things. We have, of course, our Chapter 761, our Saw Waste Regs. The board had made a decision way back April 11 of 16 with respect to condominiums, limiting it to five units. Um, we had another discussion back before the, with the board. I remember when Keith sat here uh, about collecting on private property. And you, we had a list of, uh, we probably had a much longer list, but there was about a dozen properties where we said, don't, 
please don't go on those properties again because for insurance and liability reasons. And then uh, back, uh, because the thing did spin out of control back in May of 18, I released uh, a card application. So as of that date, no cards get released without either my signature or Jennifer's signature on top of uh, the, the two gentlemen that lead and run the transfer station, the foreman, yeah. So there's a process that we definitely have in place, but we basically codified it or have brought it to a, a level here. The reason being, and I think what we need to keep in mind is what's the ultimate goal here? When I first came to the department, I remember many, many times having discussions with staff that we were a service-oriented group. That the Department of Public Works was there to serve the residents of the town. It's, it wasn't a, there was in some respects an us against them mentality. It creeps in. Yeah. Um, it needed to change. If you take that, that we are a service department, we are here to serve the residents of the, of the community, then doing it in a manner of when we consider safety, the ability of a place to store their carts, our actual collection vehicles, the rules that we have in, in place, for instance, like 75 pounds per cart, per container. If you take all those things into consideration, the path is, I think, fairly clear. Um, safety being probably, from my perspective as the director, one of the most <clears throat> important things. For instance, the reason why there's 75 pounds per cart is we don't want people injuring themselves either, you know, let's say a cart falls off the cart tipper. If it's much more than 75 pounds, it's going to crush some toes. They don't make safety boots that strong. Um, the other thing is, uh, the manager and I have had a discussion, um, mobile home park. There's two major ones in the in the town, and, and why or if do we go into those particular places? I said safety, because I can remember about three years ago having a discussion. Did I want to on Haven Drive? Did I want all 120 cars out at the entrance? I said for safety reason, no. My biggest fear is that if the carts were out there early in the morning, um, we hadn't arrived yet. Um, it's also a bus stop area, I'm sure. And if there's little kids playing hide and seek between the carts, it's uh, an accident waiting to happen. Yeah. So there's been a number of decisions that the department has made for safety reasons we either do or don't go into uh, certain properties. So the reason why I bring that up is it comes back to this determination. And if we safely can't go into some of the properties that are on this list. Some of them are condominiums. Some of them are like the uh, like the mobile home park. Part of the recommendation will be we go in, continue to go into some communities, and others we do not. Mm -hmm. And what I'm suggesting to the to the board is that we go down through this list, we look at the service determination criteria as a staff, Jennifer and, and the drivers and the transfer station uh, operators, and we determine which ones we're going to uh, go into or not go into, and that if anybody has more than 10 cards, they basically have to come up with a, um, it's a, it's a use agreement. <coughs> is what I'm asking the board to do. Um, with respect to condominiums and mobile home parks communities, the Public Works Department will be coming up with a plan on each community to determine a way of complying with the ordinances and the rules. If we cannot find a way for compliance, we'd like to move towards a written solid waste service agreement on a case-by-case -case basis. 
So for instance, the Gables, 24 unit condo project. They have 24 trash carts, they have 24 recycling carts. They keep them in their unit. One of the questions is that I have to ask myself is do I want to put those residents at danger coming out to the uh, Route 1A during the summer to pull their carts? I don't think that's a very wise decision. So part of, of a joint use agreement with them, or in this case what we call solid waste service agreement, would be to determine, okay, if we do go into your property, they're going to have to do some things for us, like one, provide us, the town, with an liability and insurance certificate that says the town is protected on their property, providing that service. But you have to agree to that. Secondly, if you have a place like, let's say, the mobile home community, and they decide not to take care of their roads and clear their roads right. properly of yeah. snow, I don't want the liability of going in there. So I want, that's why I think these things need to be covered by a service or use agreement that lays out what they need to do to maintain the service and what we need, what we're responsible to do. So um, if they didn't pick up their, if they don't clear their snow in their community, I'm not going in yeah. with my trucks. Uh, if they let the road go to a Jeep trail, I'm not going in with our trucks. We've already had one experience where we sunk, got one inch off the edge of pavement and sunk to the frame. So we can't put the town's resources at that kind of risk. But I think we should look at each one of these uh, places uniquely, uh, individually, uh, with the same criteria. But and with consistency, and that's consistent. where it would, when you were finished, that's where yeah. it was going. It's yeah. going through each of these properties and realizing that we've got to be consistent on the way we choose. So in the Gable situation that was just given as it, for example, for you guys to consider, that is something where our uh, vehicles currently go on to that property because it is multi-units, multi-building, and has the room for us to go on to it. And where he's, uh, Chris is saying, this is somewhere if we're going to continue to do that, more than 10 carts, and we're going on their property for this case, because it's someone who's had it for a while, that they'd have to have this agreement. If you look at Red Coat Lane, Butternut, same type of situations. We go down those roads, it's more than 10 things, and I put things in quotes, whether it's mm. units, condos, apartments. I mean, this board made the decision of the, you know, the 10 carts based on the five, um, yeah. the five condos, excuse me, for a second. But just treating them all the same, that if we're on that street, it's because we have the agreement in place. Mm -hmm. If we're picking up 10 on that street or in that development, it's because we have that agreement in place. Some of the harder questions come, as Chris just said, where we go down through each of these. And in the email that I had sent over um, in response uh, to your last meeting, mm -hmm. there's some examples of scenarios there that are just different. Um, Chris didn't get to it, but one of the last recommendations in what he had uh, put out is that asking the board to, again, um, Reckon, well, we're recommending that you make a motion that requires all residents and businesses to put their address on their cans. Everybody. The street, everybody. Everybody has to. So we can start. So every, I, I'm assuming everybody knows that the serial numbers on the cans are about yes. this long and consist of numbers, letters, and thing. It, it doesn't meet with the eye when you're like, like who does that belong to? Right. One of the things that happened when we did go and, and enforce the 10 cart is that we found carts sort of getting spread out amongst different places. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a slower time of year, but having the address on the cart can be preventative of that. Yeah. You know, that we're picking up 10 uh, Ashworth Ave, and I'm making up numbers obviously, at 10 Ashworth Ave, not at 10, 12, and yeah. 14. Yeah. Um, that, that we have that area defined. It also helps because we get one of the other scenarios that I had on here, Mm -hmm. People that see that we're on Ashworth more often in Ocean and other places uh, because of the frequency, because of the restaurant waste. Eh, I missed it yesterday. I'll take my cart up to Ashworth. Uh, they'll start yeah. bringing all their carts yeah. up to or down to the bottom of the street 
And then what happens is it gets mixed in with a business who actually only had 10 carts out. Now we have 14 carts right in front of the one business, but we're only picking up 10. Again, the addresses can help uh, with that scenario. But we do have other situation where we have, you know, more than five units. So more than five, and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be the big bad wolf here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the word condos that we can't go on their property. We currently don't. They bring their barrels to, say, Ocean Boulevard. Cards. There are seven units. They each have two, so it would be 14. <laughs> Do we just, is the, is the direction of this board, we're picking up 10 of those 14. And, and, the, and these are part of those 77 lists. Um, those are types of establishments that have them. And then obviously, uh, the business examples, you know, some businesses need more or want more than 10, and that we have to address, you know, in a different scenario. But so when Chris was saying the use agreement to go on the private roads and, and having something, and I had used the word grandfathered in my email, but it's through agreement. It's through the fact that we're putting our equipment on private property, but then also making the decision to be consistent. If it's more than five, does someone who is seven mm -hmm. get 14 cards, or are they just getting 10? And we're doing that across the board, because that, I mean, that's what comes up. Questions, Mrs. Wolseley? Oh, yes. This is going to be, uh, this waste problem in general is going to be haunting us for years to come. Uh, number one, I see no reason at all, and we've gotten ourselves in this, in this problem piece by piece over the years. How many communities, Chris, in New Hampshire pick up commercial waste? You know, I can say that I've honestly not looked into that, and, and I'll tell you why. Hampton is unique. Yeah, well, there is no other community that I'm aware of that has a strip of land adjacent to the beach that has yeah. that density of people during mm -hmm. the summer and has the um, density. And, and it's and it, I don't can't blame anyone. You know, it's it's what makes Hampton unique. You know, uh, I can remember when dating my wife and she's. Let's go to the beach. Okay, but I want to stop at Blinks. In other words, it, it's 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 unique to Hampton, and you you can't apply any other communities or rules to a to a Blinks, you know, or or the or the Christie's Pizza, or so. I haven't looked at other communities because I think we need to to deal with Hampton. Now, as a policy, if this board wants to change how commercial is collected, well, that's up to the board and the voters. But I'm sticking with providing service. I, in the beach area, I'm, I'm, I'm key on safety, but I'm key on cleanliness and health. Because we've seen when you jam that many people into that tight of an area for, could be weeks on time, you, you're gonna have some unique issues. And so, we're unique in that respect, so I can't compare us. I can't even compare us to Portsmouth. Okay. I'm number one, every other state park in the state of New Hampshire has roll offs and they have private contractors take away the waste. There again, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, gonna I'm gonna not looking to direct that's a board situation. So I'm not going to smile gonna... at me for a minute. Okay. Okay. Um, we have businesses all over this community that should be using private vendors to pick up their waste. We've reached a point in this community where we're stressing you out. You're having problems even hiring employees because nobody wants to work anymore. You are stressed to the breaking point. We are paying on these expensive vehicles to pick up waste and pick up waste and pick up waste. 
we have reached a breaking point where I, as one member of this board, feel we should discontinue, discontinue all commercial waste pickup by the town. That's not now, what we're here tonight, though. We're well, here we're tonight. talking we waste. Here tonight for Stop enforced. interrupting no. me. And we we're need not to clarify what our situation is. What our and situation is, is terrible, and, and you, and, and we're you. Not, we are not changing anything tonight. We are clarifying. I'm not saying you're going to snap clarifying. your fingers and change it, but we need to discuss Well, that's this. what you need to discuss. We well, need to discuss they are here to discuss what commercial, they've been working on. Commercial that's, waste pickup. That's we not have, what we're We've already made a decision. I'm not Mrs. through Rosler. yet, and I'm tired of being interrupted. Well, we then have, you need to address we have commercial for. businesses in this community who pay <coughs> to dispose of their own waste, and they are being taxed because our public works department is picking up. Mrs. Wolseley, we are here to do the clarification of what our system is here. Well, our system is broken. Okay, we've already discussed we're that. We've identified that, and we and are we here working on a solution. Mrs. Well, Wolseley. we're not going to have a solution Regina, if do you we have don't any discuss questions? it. Yes. Okay. So this is what I'm getting from all this: that we have like everything in Hampton, all these different things going on that no other town or city in the state or the country can probably relate to. And luckily, we have Chris and Jen, who are trying to find a way to get the limit that the board implemented in the beginning of January to work. So when I read the email from uh, Jen Hale that she sent to us last week, a couple of the first things. Some properties are now taking their extra cards and spreading them out between various properties they own. Mm -hmm. One way to solve that would be if we labeled all the bins yep. with the address as to where they would belong. So that might help us determine whether or not you know, some yep. people, I've been getting calls from both commercial businesses and residential mm -hmm. businesses at the beach and in town, town-wide issue, mm -hmm. not town just wide. commercial yeah. businesses I gave at the examples beach. that were yeah. okay. beyond town the beach. town-wide issue. Yes. Okay. Commercial, residential, anyone that has more than 10 bins that have been getting picked up, that has been the habit. Yeah. They're calling me and saying that. They are sure they only put 10 out, but for some reason, not all the, and it's probably because of what you're saying, because people are moving things around. Mm -hmm. And like you're saying, the private properties that you can't go on and they put out on Ocean <coughs> Boulevard, that might be affecting mm -hmm. the limit and what yeah. the public works guys see when they drive by. 100%. And so right now it's getting enforced, but it's not getting enforced properly because we have all these 77 different properties that have all these different situations mm -hmm. going on. We had a couple people speak at public comment, and we all know that this is not going to go away. It's only going to get worse. Yep. And I feel as though Public Works wants to enforce the limit that we implemented, but they need to mm -hmm. figure out exactly what the standard operating procedure is going to be. And for clarification, when I make a motion to do something, and I didn't specify this, and maybe I should have, all the other times that we make a motion to change a policy, we see the policy revisions mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. they get implemented. For some reason, that didn't happen last time. So going forward, as long as I sit on this table, that's what I will be expecting, True. is that before something gets enforced, that we see the revisions. That is normally what happens. For whatever reason, it didn't happen. I don't, not blaming anyone, but that's, and then, you know, now we get all these calls. And it's not just commercial businesses on the beach. It's residential and it's town-wide. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate everything you do, and I am, if the board chooses so, I would definitely be ready to make that motion that all um, carts that we have issued out do have the property address on them. Where yeah, wherever, wherever you, would you think that that address should be put on the carts, right on the it front? It should be on the front of the carts. Um, the location street number that the card is assigned to serve should be painted or otherwise marked on the front of the cards in a max, minimum of six inch high numbers or of a contrasting color. For example, white or yellow numbers contrast well against green and blue. Okay. So you're talking about the street address? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. If we can continue the discussion afterwards, I'll second that motion. Okay. Mm -hmm. and we could vote yeah. on that. <clears throat> Are you finished? I'm good, thank is you. That just, did you make the motion? No. I will make that motion as suggested by Public Works that we 
the location can street we, number that the card is assigned to, to okay. serve shall be painted or otherwise marked on the front of the cards in a minimum of six inch high numbers of a contrasting color. White or yellow numbers contrast well against green and blue. And I'll second that just to get, to, I mean, that's one thing we can get through and then yeah. we can go back. No, no, and that's exactly why we're here. And <coughs> I would like to state, you know, my reason for wanting something to happen is I realized just from watching that there was no rules of where there's a beginning mm -hmm. uh, and that, how can you have success? Right. And, um, and I do feel that um, from meeting with you and talking with you, that you have a good idea of exactly what you're facing, and I think no one can make a better decision than you can, both of you. Uh, we're still discussing, are we going to yep. vote on that motion? Uh, well, let, you want to finish the discussion? Okay, we'll finish the discussion. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I, I think it's been stated here tonight by public comment and stuff. We don't want to get tunnel vision and just focus in on one thing, bins. I think it's a whole big problem that we're talking about, and I think there's this a good start. And I like, Chris, uh, Chris, I like your idea of a standard operating procedure before we move forward, and we figure out exactly what we're doing so that we're not just jumping the gun and, and take, you know, going on from there. So I think it's, it's a problem. I think it's a problem that we can all address, and I think it's a problem that we can solve. I mean, there is a town just in Massachusetts that's making money still. Wellesley, Fred's old town, it's making money off of their uh, recycling still because the residents mm -hmm. do the do the uh, separation of the recycling themselves. So I mean, it, 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 there is there are solutions. We can come up with solutions. We can solve the problem. We just don't want to get tunnel vision. I think we want to make sure we're working with the whole problem. And we have moved forward. They are enforcing this now. Yep. Yeah. Well, a couple of things I see is is one uh, the reason why I was opposed to the. The motion that was made a couple of weeks ago was just this reason is we had no vision it was just do it and get it done with and we needed to have this conversation we had here tonight mm -hmm. uh, a couple questions I have I have a business that owns three lots now it may be the, the wave motel the wave motel annex and the wave motel cottages on on the back street am I entitled to 30, 10 you, per You bring up person. a very good, um, <laughs> Jennifer and I normally have very um, pleasant <laughs> conversations. This past week, for the first time ever, we had to have a closed door conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it all uh, ended fine, don't did, worry. Because what we started discussing was, okay, for instance, I have a business owner down there. He has three or four restaurants. I noticed on the list, one of those businesses is closed right now this week yeah I, I, I has, saw that business and he I, has 21 to 30 carts at that location yeah. so if it gets the question I would have to ask her in our, our closed door meeting does he have the right to wheel 10 carts from another location up to that location to have them collected off season so what you're saying right here though is as long as he has it correctly marked as and I'm not saying it, you know, that's, well, why, that's, that's what I'm saying, though. That's why the SLP it needs has to be, to be in there, vetted, clear, clear and staff. concise. Because exactly. The, okay. And that's what I'm saying. That's then, because then the other question that. Well, wait a minute. I want to understand. He's got the carts when they're marked. He's not allowed to move them across right. the street. Yeah, no, but he can put them in front of a business okay. even though it's closed. Well, see, see these are the operational that, uh, issues well, that. That's stuff we have to work out. These are the operational issues that we as a department have to be together on before we bring it back to you. Because then the other question came up, okay, um, they have a business, and this is my business sketch, but he has two other parking lots next to it that have mm -hmm. a street number. But mm -hmm. there's no occupancy or business on those. Does he get 10, 10, and 10? No. See, that's well, but it was Jennifer playing that's, devil's advocate. That and, we had but I said we had to be consistent, and that's be, how and be. that's how the conversation ended on a very positive note. If business example you gave, well, yeah. let me give the yes. example that he gave because yeah. I live next door to it. <laughs> and um, the Wave Motel had was one business, Little Jack's was another, right. and there was one house on the other piece of property that had, you know actually has two units two really. units um, so I would expect that the two units would get four 
that are on the back lot. And then, although that's going to end because it's no longer going to be a lot, it's going to be empty. And I only use the wave because it was fictitious because the wave's <laughs> been gone for 10 years. Well, and the wave had 20 units, so they would have been entitled as a business to 10. Mm -hmm. And then Little Jack's would have been 10, so they would have had 24, right. from what I'm hearing of what you would say. And that is how we looked at it because that is being consistent. If a business is on its own lot, the policy or the, the direction, let's use the word direction because we're going to make the policy, the direction was no more than 10 carts. It's when, in the example Chris gave, the two parking lots next to a business. If there's no business there, it's mm -hmm. up to 10 carts and there is some discretion there. There's no need for an empty parking lot to have 10 carts. Any carts. We could understand one trash, one recycling, and if there's enough to throw their stuff away. It, it, it's there are the streets, you know. I mean, we understand trying to keep things clean, but it would make no sense to us to issue any more than that to an empty parking lot, and that would be the consistency. No, parking lots do not get more than one. Mm -hmm. All right. Regina? Uh, yeah, just... Oh, she, uh, I, I, was, I was still talking. Oh, yeah. okay. So, no, like, I have one question. Um, we have a, um, a, a business down there who has his business, there's, there's a couple of businesses in it, and then next door there, there is a vacant lot, except all summer long we have eight or ten tents that are up there. Now, is each one of those lots entitled to ten? That, that we'll have to and, and again, this is yeah, stuff we'll, we need we'll to look to, at before yeah, we... You're right. Fred, that was, told, Fred told me that, uh, that is, there is no uh, building on that lot. So I don't, that uh, is I, uh, I don't believe that from well, Fred. I think it's, see, it's and businesses what, that we have there that are, right. and that's but what that's we need to what do. that's what makes Hampton unique. Exactly. It's those kind of situations. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And as I say, this SLP is should have been June of 11, but we're just getting to it now. Um, and, and we've done it in drag pieces. And when we said before about like uh, empty parking lots don't get any carts, right. well, we put carts at the end of Concord, yeah. the end of Atlantic, yeah. so that people coming off the beach well, don't throw it exactly. somewhere else. So that's why I said from an operational issue and a safety issue, and so it doesn't create more work for the department, because I'll be the one they're going to call to go pick it up. These are one of those operational issues mm -hmm. that you have to let, we hope you let the department to determine what, it, and, and mm -hmm. we'll bring it back to you for your, you know, clarification. Yeah. First but of all, the, sorry, but the policy on. is for a maximum of 10. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you don't, it doesn't mean that you automatically get 10. Correct. Correct. We are targeting the 77 right. properties. Is it property, 77 yeah. properties? Yes, 77 properties. That have more than 10. Right. Correct. All right, so I mean, like what we do now on Concord Ave and Boston Ave and the ones on the west side of the sidewalk, that is not, that's irrelevant to me because it's not over the 10. We're trying, and you know, so you obviously, for those 77 properties, there are a bunch of different situations going on, and we are getting recommended from Public Works that they need to assess all that so that they can show us what the recommended standard yeah. operating procedure exactly. will be. Ideally, and Chris put it in this memo, is that we want to be able to come back to you, give us the time mm -hmm. to go through 77 properties, talk to our folks, what are the constraints that go through it, and say this is what we recommend. And I can guarantee you it won't be one recommendation because there is not one right. fit right. that addresses well, all there 77 There are a lot of businesses too that, ha that own they buy adjacent properties either for their staff or for parking or whatever. Those are houses, but I've heard people refer that they expect to have 10 in those places, when really they're not. No. Uh, they may be part of that business, but they're not that business. Mrs. Wolseley? What's the drop-dead date for getting your name and address on the bottom front of your cart? July 1. Okay. No, seriously, because some of the... People aren't here. They They're won't not come here. back up front. Okay. I, I don't expect... No, she uh, said bottom front. I thought it was the top of the front. No, the front as it faces the street. You've got yeah. printing on the top part we, of the front anyway. Yeah. When the board finishes its motion on here, mm -hmm. it will all get publicized as you'll see a picture of a cart 
put address Thank here. You. We will get that on social media, yeah. Facebook, the web okay. pages. Excellent. Now, and I expect 80% compliance in the yeah. next two months, but I think right. the other 20% right. by July 1. Now, uh, what are we going to do with these businesses that are now limited to 10 carts? I hope we're going to them and picking those carts up and storing them at Public Works. We are, well, we, we discussed that somewhat internally. Right now, that was part of the reason for going around on on that, uh, had James get in the truck, go find out how many mm -hmm. are out. It was only like three locations. But well, then look at some of the carts. We've been at, some of these carts were issued back in 2011. Yeah. They've, uh, they've made the road west, or the hike west, a couple of times. Mm -hmm. These are not wagons that we want back in the fleet. Uh, I think, between the ones that are missing wheels, have already splits and cracks in them, yeah. that it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that they're only gonna have 10 that work. Okay, and they shouldn't uh, be putting out the defective ones. Oh, oh no, they can pick them up. They can put them out, but we may be emptying them and then taking them home. In other words, there isn't a, I don't need to go and do a wholesale collection. I need to look at each mm -hmm. and every yes. site on its own merits. And I appreciate that. And, and you know, we want to work with the businesses. If they've paid for the carts, okay, they're, they're their carts. But the ones that we gave out free, I can take those back. I mean, and we gave out a number free. The free we didn't ones are the only ones they can take back. Right. Because mm -hmm. the other people paid for them and that's just the way it is. Right. But are, is the town willing to, uh, if those people just want to surrender their, their carts, the town would oh. pay for them? We're, we're, We'll work with these people. I mean, mm -hmm. certainly, you know, there's, yeah, if, if taking them back then saves us from me having to buy more, it's to the town's benefit. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll get them back. But um, a lot of them, I think, are worn to a real Yeah, yeah mine are splitting now. Exactly. The so I part. think that's, we're, that's why we had to quarter carts this year. We're seeing a number of people that, like, the car can't make another trip. So, mm -hmm. Rusty? Yeah, and I, I, I still think we have some work to do on that whole part of it. <laughs> Excuse me, Mary Louise. Um, you it, you're right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I can. And, and one of that is we've been picking all this trash up. Yeah. And after now we're limiting it to 10. Mm -hmm. What do we expect those car to happen to the rest of those carts in that trash? <laughs> some of them will get. Some of the carts will get redispersed. Some of them all end up picking up. Some of them are just already worn out. But what about the trash, that, that, the <laughs> volume that what's, is still there? What's going to happen is, let's say you're the kind of business. So you've got 10 carts. You can decide, do I want to save my carts for filling them with cardboard? Do I want to put my putrescible kitchen waste in them? Or do I want to fill them with glass? Mm -hmm. I think you'll see, as a, a, a reasonable response to this, Hey, I'm gonna put my, uh, I'm gonna buy a glass crusher, okay, for one guy. Another guy's gonna say, hey, I'm gonna force my kitchen staff, and we heard this from the Solid Waste Committee, that um, they're going to uh, segregate their cardboard a lot better. They, as a matter of fact, they want to know if they could just bring it in in a pickup truck and give it to me, okay? Um, so every business association group they're going to have to do they'll do it differently the condos that let's say they've got six carts for trash and four for recycling because we're not telling them what mix they can have these people are going to realize okay we're all going to mix our our cardboard our recycling back in those containers so it wouldn't be everybody doesn't get their own special container um so i think you're going to see the, with the 10, with respect to the 10, that it's going to cause people to examine how they do things and decide what is the most important waste stream, portion of their stream they want the town to pick up. The other part of it, I, we're already seeing businesses that bring us a, a load of cardboard on a Sunday night or a Sunday afternoon or Monday morning. So now, one of, the, one of the things that came out of that committee was the possibility of having a cardboard dumpster or maybe a glass dumpster down the beach. Right. To do that, is there any beginning more thought to that? Yes, that's why the Warren articles that started the recycling fund and the 
with the seed money that was in there that's in where the that transfer will... station study allowing us to do purchasing to be able to rework the areas and how I want people to know they're going to be able yeah. to they're still going to be have a way to get rid of some oh, of this stuff right. we yeah. need we, we just can't say we're cutting it off and it, screw the rest of you and, and don't cut it off at 10 barrels though. Well, but, and, and the the, the uh, comment was made earlier and I forget who said it that you know this is uh, this is you know we're, it's gonna we're gonna be plagued with this problem for 20 years mm. this is like to us like wastewater it comes in every day yep okay it's never gonna go away it's what we do and yes as people's um, personal practices and habits change as the market changes to maybe let's say less packaging less cardboard maybe no mm -hmm. plastic less glass we will modify change and mm -hmm. adapt and these policies are forever always going to be changed. The yeah, biggest. I was going to say, you know, I again, Hampton is unique, but so is Portsmouth. And you know what? Yeah. Portsmouth doesn't pick up any commercial trash. But people have had to work uh -huh. the other way right. to, uh, you know, to uh, make sure they don't make as much trash. And I'm not exactly sure what they do, but there are people here in Hampton that have businesses in Portsmouth, and they can see these things. Yeah. I think. The purpose, one of the main reasons to make some of these changes is that people are more thoughtful of what they do with their trash. But for years, people have been throwing stuff in the tracks, trapped in their truck and running to the dump or whatever. If, you know, and if you have a business that makes more than 10 barrels of trash, you should be doing that, in my opinion. Oh, the big we'll, okay. hey, we'll go ahead and finish Rusty, well, and then I'll. You know, the biggest thing I see is, is the one thing we're going to need out there is some education. Definitely. And we need to spend more than a dollar twenty-nine on education. Mm -hmm. You know, I looked at, uh, I, I saw an article the other day, and it, it was uh, uh, one of the cities in, uh, I think it was Philadelphia. They spend six hundred and sixty thousand dollars a month on education for trash. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're not going to spend that. <laughs> and, and, and if we had that to spend, we, we couldn't even do it. Right. But the fact is, it was that important. We got to educate people on what to throw away and what to put out there. And if we have a place, encourage people, encourage the beach businesses. And I think this was part of the the committee was to, to get away from all the glass beer bottles. You're never going to get away with glass. Vodka comes in glass. The <laughs> gin comes in glass. Everything comes in glass. The pickles come in glass. The olives come in glass. <laughs> but try to limit the beat glass and the beer bottles. You know, and I, I think that's a great way to go, and I don't know how we, if we can mandate that. Well, but and, and I think we should be able to work with our businesses to get them to do that. Right. And the Solid Waste Committee, in the end, decided that that's why the town should hire this outside vendor, probably Waste mm -hmm. Zero, to come up with a program to how to solve that particular problem and a host of other problems. I tell you, the, the uh, the Budweiser delivery will love it because they can haul twice as many beer cans as they can beer bottles, and so they're gonna they're gonna like that part of it. So, and same for hauling and getting back. You, I'm sure, get more money for aluminum than you do for glass. So, Mrs. Wolsey, we could probably go back to prohibition. You may. Um, the I don't remember that far back. <laughs> I st I still. Look at two factors here, and you certainly have the most challenging job of anyone in this entire community. You and you, you're both wonderful about what you're you're working on. Commercial waste should be picked up by private haulers. There's no problem with giving business because you'd be giving business to private individuals, and I think. Uh, America is built on uh, businesses succeeding. Uh, I want, when we sit down with the state of New Hampshire for our annual joint operations Okay, we're plan, not going to talk about that. I'm going to... Regina. Uh, well, that, no, wait, we're not going to talk. Either you okay, need to follow the direction of the that. board. But I see no reason to allow public pickup of commercially generated waste. <coughs> they should all be okay, paid. Okay, we heard you if that's the, what you want to say. Wait you a want minute, to say what, wait what a we're minute, here tonight for. Wait, and then the, the businesses who do hire private 
parties to remove their waste, are paying in their taxes for the people who get commercial waste pickup through the town. Regina, do you That's want to talk? That's not fair Regina. either. Yes, I do. Regina, That's you're recognized, Regina. Okay, one thing, I want to bring something up about the bottles. I don't think that that is a huge problem, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And I also think that it's not right for us to think about having a no glass ordinance in this town since the town is the one that told the businesses yeah. to stop having the distributors pick the bottles up because we're going to make money off it. Okay, so because I worked down the beach back then when they all came and they picked the empty bottles up and I also worked till we didn't leave the restaurant at night until all the cardboard was bundled up yeah. separately mm -hmm. so that it could be so I think there was a couple points made here tonight where recycling sorting is our problem. Now whether we have businesses do it or the town decides to do it, I mean that article is going to work toward that I think. Um, but also the other thing I want to talk about is implementation. So you're saying you want to come back to us with standard operating procedures. So what's going to happen between now and then? Thank you. We have a date, a deadline. Like what is your plan for trash pickup? on you know this week like so, so i'm going to just jump in and then i'm going to let chris right. lay out the plan the thought here tonight was to come and explain to you how we went about going 10 carts or more what did we start doing laid out what we did we went found out the people who supposedly have more than 10 carts we did stop picking up Good. more than 10 carts with the exceptions of the few that I gave you in the letter. Mm -hmm. We are still going into Hemlock, the trailer parks. We do have some properties. So again, we said 77 properties that have more than five businesses on them or five units or cottages. Mm -hmm. um, we have allowed them because they're individual businesses. They're not related to each other. Let them have more than 10, but they don't each these are the ones that we have to come back to you and say, well, this is what we recommend mm -hmm. um, because there's no cut case for it. There are some that we haven't really touched on tonight. I gave the yeah. um, example of the condos that's seven. You know, if we're going to only pick up 10 from them, there will be two homeowners that call because their barrels will still be full. And there's no guarantee each week we'll get the same two homeowners not emptying their barrels. We, we just can't do that. That's not how our operations can work is spread out. Well, do we continue, and go with the policy of 10, and let them realize that you had asked, you know, what are they supposed to do with the trash? Well, if their neighbor's one isn't full, throw it in that. I mean, if we have 10 half empty barrels, why pick up 14? But so there is a little bit more direction we need tonight to, to still be implementing no more than 10 but that's what we'll put in the policy yeah. that will come back to but you. they're already doing what we've asked them to do as far as i understand it i spent some time talking with them and that's not going to change they're going to continue to do that correct right. what you're doing if, right now if, that, if that's yeah. what you want and just yeah. knowing right. that there will yeah. be unhappy residents from what i understand right but if it's so unclear as to whose carts or what i don't understand how we can only not implement not exactly. every case for some is properties unclear. and not them all because you're saying there's all these exceptions mm -hmm. well some of them are from that they go so far back it was before there was any regulation and that's why they pick up those particular ones mm -hmm. other people have it that's already stated in their condo docs that they're not being picked up so there's no question there there are a few hybrid ones and um i think um really people should go in and talk with them and ask because they can explain exactly they have a reason for that trailer uh, park of why that has to be picked up so 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 the, address the answer of schedule you know what's our time frame uh, i checked with fred this morning i'm due back here for uh, further consultation with you on the 24th of this month uh, in the term, form of a quarterly report um, I would like to this the fin finish out this week working on the document internally with our staff then turn it over through the manager's office to have legal department look at it Good. I certainly don't want to say or do something in the SOP that is yeah. against law 
Um, I want it to be supportive. Um, and then I would think we could have it after um, legal is done with it. It could be released Fred's disc discretion to to the board to for uh, your comments before we make it or ask you to vote on it. And we can revisit this issue on the 24th. Mm -hmm. well, one thing I see is, is I think every one of us here want to see us get to 10 cards. I think that's ultimately what well, yeah, it was. I think the ten cards is a good. Point. However, right now you have a you have a vote, a vote of this board that stop at ten cards. Right. So if you're going over ten cards and you're not doing what the the board technically is asked you to do. Correct. And that puts you in a very bad bind. Correct. And that's that again goes back to my reason for not wanting to do it tomorrow when that vote was to do it. But let's get to work with them to do it. So I think we need to either look at that vote that we've already had and work with their timeline so that they're not feeling the pressure of they're going against what the board wanted. They aren't. I, it, okay. As far as I understand, this is what they want, too. It yeah. is what yeah. they want, but the, the board says right now for the, the one place, like she mentioned, that has 14 cards, mm -hmm. yeah. if, 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 if you're going to stick with that vote, that she has to tell them they can't pick up four of those cards. Personally, I feel like you should tell them they can't pick them up because it, there are fourteen for cards. That, I think it should. If that's happen. the direction, that's well, where I, that, we that's can what head. I think. It was my happen. motion that I made, so I like to speak on it when yeah. everyone else is okay. done. Thanks. Well, let's let the town attorney speak. He wants right. to speak. Yeah, uh, Jen. Unfortunately, you opened the door for me anyway on a subject. <laughs> I review condominium documents all the time for conversions of existing units uh, to condominiums and so the direction I got from the board was if it's no more than five units will continue to pick up if it's more than five mm -hmm. you won't at all regardless of the number right and we don't issue right. did I get that right right and so the 77 or so exceptions here or situations you're talking about all are where we are had picked up before, and now we need to know what to do. This is that right? Right. To, to the to the number of carts only. The Isn't this one of those places where they dragged them out to the street at one point? Yeah. Yeah. This is was one of those where the people were bringing them out to the street. They didn't even really at one point know they were coming from the condos. I don't think. But are you finished? Yeah. Regina, did you want to say? Yeah. That? So the motion I made on. On uh, 1 6, January 6, Selectman Bodge's motion to approve the limit of 10 bins, second by, all right, that wasn't second. Selectman Bodge's motion to approve the limit of 10 bins, selected by Selectman Wolseley. Okay, Chairman Griffin stated he felt it'd be a mistake to wait any longer. Selectman Barnes noted the number did not come from anywhere, it was established for residential. She reiterated something needs to be done now. And nowhere in here does it say that we're going to implement this tomorrow. As I stated earlier in the meeting, every time we made a decision on a policy change, it is presented to the Board of Selectmen to review the policy change, and then it gets enforced. Public Works is now telling us that it is impossible to put a town-wide limit on 10 bins. So I don't understand how no, until they think, come. I don't think that happened, Regina. No, no they don't no. think it did either. No. Oh, no? No. So, but you're only enforcing it for a certain of those 77 properties that have more than 10 bins. But that's that's why I had James go out. I've got one, two, three, four. Four places that had more than 10 bins. But to be honest with you, the 10 weren't like in front of one house. The, this, the 10 one case is serves 83 separate individual residences. So we just stopped in front of each one of those. Another one was 22 individual residents. So we stopped in front of those. And another one was 28 unit condo project that I mentioned earlier that had 25 carts. But um, again, I'm, I'm still missing where the policy revision was presented to the board that we're now implementing. There was no policy. It, it right. was never prevented because he didn't even have it. He hasn't yeah. had it. Even but if you look later on in the minutes, and if it's not there, you look at the tape. It was stated that night that it wanted. It, it, the, the question was asked of when we were going to implement this, and it was tomorrow. Yes, and I right. agree. That's, that's exactly that's what, what was said. That's said. So and it was said, and everybody agreed. And, and three yeah. people agreed to that. Yeah, and I think it should be that way, true. 
I, I don't see any. And, and any it's not a problem right now. He has. A, I only have four sites that. Yeah. I right. might. The few have. ones that he's talking about are going to involve the lawyer. So a has there been any places that you have not picked up what normally gets picked up since we talked about this on January sixth? One or two of them had to wait till the next day to get the next five cards. Mm -hmm. But other than that, so no, nobody's. We haven't wholesale left waste out there. But okay. again, it's a vote of this board for them to do it. So for them not to do it, they're going against a vote of the board. I just don't want to see them in a in, right. in a quandary. That's right. my only concern. I think from when I talked to them, they are doing what they said they were going to do. Right from that very first night. Yeah. yeah. Mrs. Wolseley. This is the tip of the iceberg. We're not going to solve it overnight. But I would like us to have some serious focus. This this is the hardest job in town. There's no doubt about it. Totally this is a, this is a tough job, but we are going to have to be open to revising policies for a while until we settle the commercial waste situation, which no town should be picking up, and also settle the problem with the state parks. But this you're doing an incredible job and I think there's no one who would who would dare want to be in your place. You have a tough, Would you tough like job. to say more? No. I, I would like to <laughs> Jim number one, what Mark said is correct. It wasn't it was anybody any over five units in a condo, nothing gets picked up. Yeah, and I'm the whole Not 10. It's That's correct. Right. Nothing. No, it's five. It means you get two barrel, five trash, and five recycling. If you have five units or less. Right. But if you're over five units, you get nothing. Right. Unless you're, the, the, that doesn't count the commercial ones. That doesn't account for commercial, but that's what, that's what we had said. That was the policy yeah, we made. Yeah, that's basically yeah. what it should be. And, and when that's that correct. policy went in effect, we were still that's picking up. Doing. It, it, that didn't change how we treated the gables. We still picked them, all 25 of them up. Right. It didn't change Hemlock Haven for us, and it didn't change Four Seasons. But it did time. change some. It did change some. Because right. you did pick them up, at, <clears throat> and it doesn't matter to me, right. but you did pick them up at my condo. Right. Because right. it was over five units, right. which was no problem because that was what yeah. we said. But, I mean, and I think... We have to know what we're doing. We have to know well, what we're doing. So they pick up all your trash? No, nothing. No, no. They used yeah. to pick up just recycling. We used to oh, give yeah. out recycling. Right. And then when we said five yeah. Yeah. Or, or less, yeah. then they took the recycling yeah. back, which yeah. was fine, because that, yeah. that's what we had said. But it's got to be consistent, and, and well, we've got to give them a chance no, to I develop it. I think it is consistent. Exactly. And, you know, he's, they, that Gables is one of the oldest condos, and they evidently were before their, you know, there was probably in their, what do you call them, when you build a building, your yeah, condo docks. Yeah. Condo docks. Yeah. Condominium yeah. documents for yeah. that particular project are the only condominium docks in town that guaranteed the builders that the town would pick up all of their trash. And see, that's why they have to stick with that. They've already got agreements. Who makes 100 agreements and it doesn't stick to them? Yeah. You know, and just change 30, 20 years later. But that one is beyond the scope of the time. It's I would like to ask, you know, the others were told they wouldn't be picked up. Representative Bushway has been very good about following up on town issues, and I would like to ask her if we could this evening, if she can do a little, just a little talking around Concord and see how many communities in the state, or just get a little percentage, how many many communities in the state pick up commercial waste. Mrs. Wilson, we know none. That's beside the point. That's not why we're here. Uh, so uh, well, that's let's, a draw, let's bring this to an end. With none. Any, I'm good. Yeah. So we are uh, on board with doing it just the way Hang you've on been. Hang one minute. Yeah. Are we doing the names on the thing? Yes. Number, oh, numbers, yeah, we didn't. Cards. We didn't. Oh, yeah. All those in favor of putting the names on the bill. As of what date? Names and addresses. It's, it's, what day? As determined by the DPW. As determined by DPW. As determined. It's the street, and street number. No. Pursuant to the what I put on the. He number. just said he expects it in the next two months, and certainly for people that might not be here at this time 1st. of the year by July first. So within two months, July first. So all those in favor, 
Thank you. And I want to thank you for leading the team. I understand from talking to Chris that he felt that, you know, he needed to make sure just to do what he needs to do. He wants to do it too. And they're very happy with this, uh, the way that we've decided to do it. I, want, I, understand. I, I don't agree with you, Rick, but like I said, we have a motion or a, a directive out there that it's the beginning, and now we can work but with it, the committee. It, but the director didn't say that. It said tomorrow. At that time, it said tomorrow we're going to do this, and I don't think they are ready for that. Yeah. Well, he was ready for it. He we started doing it, and morning. he told me he was about, happy with it. But I told him, you know, if you came up with 12, just pick them up. You know, yeah. we needed to. He's got to We spent along. the first week assessing the, how big the elephant was. Yeah. He's got a handle on it. I, I, trust me, I know he's he does. He's going to lead us on I just in don't, the right I, way. And, and he's doing a great job. I just don't want to see. We have to be supportive, and I think he understands that there's yeah. time for, that this is going to be um, changed. That now, from once we have this starting point, when there, uh, the, the uh, recycling committee uh, uh, reconvenes, uh, then some more changes can be explored. And I think I want to be on that committee. But Next year, so I won't be so poor. But once again, gentlemen, this is the tip of the iceberg. Yep. This is going to constantly that. change and upgrade or downsize. Thank you, this Mrs. Wilson. And thank you for coming thank in. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. You take one. So, and uh, closing uh, comments. Could I bring up oh, the yeah? subject? Oh, yeah. Please do. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, consistent with what Representative Bushway brought up. Uh, sometimes legislation gets brought to our attention that we have to deal with on a very quick basis. Um, in this case, I'm talking about a bill brought up in the NHMA legis latest legislative bulletin, which is the bill that would prohibit regulation of short-term rentals. This is Senate Bill 458. It's scheduled for a hearing on Wednesday, February 5th at 1015 up at the Legislative Office building. A Senate Committee, uh, which is the uh, Senate Elections Law and Municipal Affairs Committee. Uh, it's one of those bills that is trying to ram down municipalities' throats a statewide zoning regulation that would supersede what every town does, and it's different things dealing with the situation of short term rentals. Uh, Portsmouth you, has been in the news with a particular case that went to the New Hampshire Supreme Court, mm -hmm. and the Supreme Court upheld Portsmouth's uh, uh, prosecution of a certain case where people had bought property and, and then turned it into a short-term rental place. Um, our particular town deals with this by requiring certificates of rental occupancy, regardless of the number of units involved. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we don't have a, a housing code as such, but what we do is we enforce the state building code. And, and that's, that's all for the public health and safety. And so we've had that for years. Uh, this law would supersede that, and we could not enforce that for a place that has uh, single family units or uh, one to four family building or structures. And not only would it preclude us from, from our process of uh, the rental occupancy certificates, but it also supersedes our zoning that says certain zones can or can't have certain yeah. types of uses, such as boarding houses, tourist cabins, um, motels and hotels. All that would be superseded by this one regulation. It, our state is not one size fits all, right. but right. this particular bill is gauged in that fashion. And um, the Municipal Association says, urges people to con consider attending the hearing and says, if that is not possible, please contact members of the committee and your own senator and urge them to support local control by voting against the bill. Um, the, the Committee of Election Laws and Municipal Affairs is chaired by uh, Melanie Levesque, uh, but one of its vice chair is our senator, Tom Sherman. Yeah. And he opposes this bill, I believe, doesn't he? Uh, I'm not sure. I believe that's what he told me at the uh, deliberative session, as I understood it. But what, what I would, uh, I know that Fred and I, who are some of the usual suspects who go to these hearings, <laughs> neither of us are able to go. 
uh, Jamie has just now been confronted with the prospect, could he go? And he doesn't know yet. He'll have right. to look at this. But in any event, I've prepared a letter to the chairman, Melanie Levesque. Okay. And I have her email address so that uh, I prepared a letter for Fred to sign, and we can send it if the board authorizes it, because the board speaks for the town. Do you want a motion? I would like to say one thing on this bill. Certainly. Yes, this is another way of Concord trying to uh, overrule our local right. control, and I am totally opposed to it, and I also am available to go if this board chooses so to hand deliver that, that letter to the uh, committee on Wednesday morning. Do you want a motion from the board, or do you think Fred's letter will suffice? Well, well I think like she I, wants to go, I, she should just go. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think a letter from Fred also says. Yeah. yeah. And from the whole board, I can yeah. bring it. Right. Yeah. Yes. And Tom Sherman is against this. I believe I even read it in the paper. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, he agreed, he made a statement that he agreed with the same. He uh, is. A, yeah, I know, and he also is opposed to the Housing Appeals Board yeah. that Concord is trying yeah, to. The, uh, Lo they, the Sweep us with as well. legislators often tell us that having <laughs> local officials come to testify is, can be very effective. Well, I think I think I, I got no problem with sending a letter from the board, and if Regina wants to go up and speak, I have mm -hmm. no problem with that. Yeah. A motion to that effect would be helpful. Okay. All the um, who wants to make the motion? I will so move. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Closing comments. Any closing comments? Mr. Chairman, I do have a. Um, Personnel matter that I have to quickly be bring before the board in non-public session tonight. No. Okay. So Make a motion. Uh, Ninety-one a, a colon three, 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 three Roman two, two small <laughs> a and a and c Fred a and c yes. Okay, I make that motion. I'll second. Aye. 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 Thank you, Channel Twenty Two. <coughs> Thanks for coming in, Pat. 22 guys are just working all the time. Thanks, Pat. <laughs>